books nowadays don't have a fun time. Like, give me a map, give me a visual aid, like, give me a graph. If you're going to talk about a graph, put it in the book. <laughs> like, right here is a count of the dinosaurs in the park. And it's so fun because it's, like, expected, found, and then later in the book when they find out the dinosaurs are reproducing, <laughs> the found exceeds the expected. And I feel like the visual aid is, like, it's, like, like it feels like you're figuring it out because you look at it and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't know if that made sense, and if you don't, if you aren't familiar with Jurassic Park, that might be really confusing. But yeah, I've been known to be annoying about Jurassic Park. And I also feel like liking this in high school. I was stuck getting dinosaur-themed gifts for several years, which I didn't mind. It's just funny. <laughs> okay, next up is a current fave. I read this for the first time, I want to say two years ago. And, okay, let me, let me give some, let me give some context. You know how certain men behave about, like, the Joker? Or, like, Patrick Bateman from American Psycho? That's how I am about this book. Like, the main character in this book can do no wrong. <laughs> and I will argue about it. She's a girl boss. <laughs> it's Gone Girl. Me liking Gone Girl as much as I do might be my red flag. And I did a, for a class last year, for when you're in school, for counseling, you have to do like mock diagnostic assessments a lot just to get used to the format. And I did one on Amy from Gone Girl. It was very fun. She has a lot going on. I just like... I feel like this book does such a good job building, like, understanding and empathy for Amy, but then also turning it on its head. But also, you still have those feelings. It's, it's bizarre. It's like, the first time I read this, my life changed. Like, oh my gosh. I need to reread it soon. Oh my gosh, I just remembered another book I wanted to talk about, but I think it's at my parents' house. I have a bookshelf here in my living room. That's why you've never seen it. And then I have another bookshelf at my parents' house because I own probably like 250 books on estimate. So it's kind of a lot to haul around places. So I abandoned some in my parents' basement, much to their dismay. I think this review says all you need to hear about Gone Girl. Just this minute, I finished a week of feeling betrayed, misled, manipulated, provoked, and misjudged, not to mention having all my expectations confounded. Considering how compulsively I kept coming back for more, I'm seriously thinking of going back to page one and doing it all again. Exactly. Let's take the dust jacket off and see what it looks like. If all but one of these books are thrifted, I don't buy books new, with the exception of whenever Suzanne Collins puts out a new Hunger Games book, I pre-order that, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, I only thrift my books or get them from the library. I've also read, I've, re I've read every single thing Gillian Flynn has written. And Sharp Objects and Dark Places are both very good, but they're not as good as Gone Girl, but they're still worth reading. Oh my god, I can't show you my cute little stamp, because it's my fucking... Oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Should we 
read the first paragraph together. This is from the perspective of Nick Dunn. When I think of my wife, I always think of her head, the shape of it to begin with. The very first time I saw her, it was the back of the head I saw, and there was something lovely about it, the angles of it, like a shiny, hard corn kernel or a riverbed fossil. She had what the Victorians would call a finely shaped head. You can imagine the skull quite easily. I'd know her head anywhere. Okay. <laughs> this book I'm a little bit hesitant to include just because 
it's been a couple years since I've read it, but I remember really liking it, and I've been saying it's my favorite book ever since, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust past to me, but I haven't vetted this recently, is what I'm saying. Um, my other favorite Stephen King books are Carrie, The Shining, I mean, the iconic ones. Um, I really like The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon, that's like a very unique book, I think, in terms of Stephen King books. Um, oh my god, I have this, um, it's, it's out of date now because he writes so many books. I have this book, though, that's, like, basically an encyclopedia of every Stephen King book, and it has, like, a breakdown of the plot and all the characters, and I keep track in that, and I will cross out the books that I've read, and I'll write my little opinion on them. I think that book is at my parents' house, though. I need to find it. Anyways, this book here is Gerald's Game. And they did make this into a movie, so maybe you've seen that. It's on Netflix, and it's it's really good. <laughs> it's not for the fate of heart, though, nor is this book. Can I say I am dying for a resurgent of resurgence of pocket-sized paperbacks? They don't print books like this anymore, and I want them back. These fit in my fanny packs, and I love that. y'all that these aren't all my favorite books. One bad thing about thrifting books is if I read like a recent book I really like, I kind of forget about it. I would have to consult my Goodreads. I think, I remember a book I liked last year was The Poppy War, which I actually might own. Did I buy The Poppy Wars? I don't remember. We're not talking about that, we're talking about Stephen King. Um, that's kind of hilarious. Just have a big picture of yourself in the back of your book. Um, this book is about a woman who gets stuck, handcuffed to her bed in her vacation home with no one around to hear her scream. But it's deeper than that. It's definitely a book about coming to terms with trauma and trying to move past it, which I think that connected with me. And the movie has the mom from Spy Kids as the lead character, and I love her. I don't know her name, I just know she's the mom from Spy Kids. <laughs> Y'all like Spy Kids. Let's find a line to read. She waited, knowing she could not afford to wait, and also knowing she could do nothing else. I'm gonna end it there. It's getting graphic. This whole book's a bit graphic. I really recommend, if you're interested in reading this book, to maybe read some reviews or read a summary just to make sure it's not gonna be something that sends you into a bad headspace. But I enjoy it. I also enjoy this cover. It's cute. It's pink. I love it. Does it look pink on camera? It looks bad. Okay. This next one is purely nostalgia based. Like, I haven't read this in probably seven years, but when I was like 13, 14, 15, I loved this book. I read it so many times. And a couple years ago, I DM'd the author on Instagram, and she is a lovely woman. She's so lovely. She does so much, like, work in publishing and in our community to, like, prevent, like, book bans and to promote, like, LGBTQ plus voices. Like, she's amazing. And I DM'd her on Instagram a few years ago, and, like, all I said was that I had, you know, found this book again and that I remember loving it so much and, like, thank you for writing it. And then she offered to sign a copy for me. So this is a signed book. It is Everybody Sees the Ants. By A.S. King. This book is very good. It's, I think it's a YA book. And it says, for my name, the simplest answer is to act. And then her signature. Isn't that fun? This book 
book is also about, I would say at its core, about trauma and about generational trauma. Um, it's about a teenager who essentially hallucinates his grandfather who died in the Vietnam War or went missing in the Vietnam War. And he also sees ants that talk to him. It sounds very strange. It's very good, though. I really like this book. The main character's name is Lucky. Happening at once, like, please keep that in mind. All this is happening at once because. 
is, you know, you'll have a long chapter of John doing something up north, and then you'll have a long chapter of Cersei doing something down south. And it's like, they aren't happening linearly. They're happening. Wait, no, maybe they are happening. They're happening all at once, is what I'm trying to say. I'm not wording this well. Here's the maps. Like, those are some detailed, tiny maps. And we have more. It's pretty small text. If it was any bigger, this book would be like... <laughs> it would be like a pound. Probably already is a pound. Okay. But yeah, with that said... I just want to...